let's talk about making visual novels. If you want to know my opinion on the new visual novel maker, I think it's pretty decent. If you're having a hard time coding up a visual novel, I think it's probably worth buying because you don't have to code anything in it. But let's talk about making visual novels in general. Because it doesn't do everything right, and I'd like to talk about the things it does wrong. Now normally, if you're going to be making a visual novel, you're going to be using RenPy, which is what you see here. RenPy is a Python library that lets you code your visual novel, but you have to code it, and that's a big barrier. There's two things wrong with it. First off, most people don't know how to code. And second off, this coding doesn't make any sense. A visual novel is a very linear and visual environment. You should just be able to do linear visual coding. Trying to keep the entire scene in your head all the time while you're editing is a huge pain in the butt. If you've got three characters, you have to remember how they're all animating, which ones need to have different animations when. Uh, if it forks, you have to remember both forks, and if it rejoins, you have to remember that too. Oh, and you forgot that it forks based on strength, and, well, your strength value can't actually get that high by then because your strength increasing thing actually happens later in the story and you've forgotten. Oh, it's a mess. Keeping all of that information up in your head at all times is incredibly difficult, and Python does not care. Uh, so RenPy has a huge weakness here. It's very difficult to make a visual novel in RenPy. It's easier than most of their competitors, but it's still very hard, to the extent where most visual novels are not made in RenPy. They're not made in anything else, either. They're just not made in RenPy, <laughs> if you get what I mean. So, this is a problem, and it is a huge barrier to entry, and it's not really RenPy's fault. And there are some things you can do to sort of mitigate it, but in general, it's not a good fit. Well, the new Visual Novel Maker has a visual editor. Like RPG Maker, it's by the same folks, it has this drag and drop command system, and you can see little icons and color coded situations and stuff like that, so it's fairly friendly. More importantly, as you click through, it plays, and this is actually playing. I can just click here and resume the game and go wherever I need to go, and it'll just run. That's fantastic. So this is a wonderful technique. It allows you to instantly figure out what's going on in the scene and put together whatever you need to put together to make it happen. Still has some weaknesses. First off, this real-time editing is really poor because it's not really real-time editing. It's just a real-time display of code editing. For example, I can go down here and I can drag this character over here if I hit edit on the command, right? but I can't just drag her. I can't right-click and then say say, because right-click does something else. So this isn't really interactive enough to make it a solid um, real-time editor. I can't, it's not, a, it's not a WYSIWYG editor, and you really need to have one for a visual novel. And there's no reason not to have one, except for it, it, laziness, I guess. It, clearly the game knows that this is this character and this is this character, so when I tell someone to talk, why do I have to select from this drop-down list? Why can't I just click on them? And there's a couple of other problems. For example, if you go past an event like this, it actually pops up a permanent thing on the screen and dies. You can't skip past it. There's no default values. It doesn't list the default. Uh, it doesn't list your current values over here for the various variables, so you can't change those values to test various other approaches, which means you've got to permanently add in something that cements one of those values at, a, at a, some arbitrary value, and then you've got to remember to remove that later. And once again, it gets complicated, and again, there's no way to tell whether or not those values are changed in another, in another scene. There's no flowchart telling you which scenes happen first and which scenes happen next. It's really quite limited. Um, it's better, but still too limited. Uh, now, out of the options that actually exist, this is probably the best one. And it's really interesting. I can tell what their inspirations were. I'm going to show you. But I can't actually show you their inspirations as they were when they were inspired, because this is actually stolen from early versions of Inform 7. Inform 7 later changed their UI a little bit. But here's Inform 7. It's a text adventure game. 
uh, maker. So in Form 7, you type stuff in and it interprets it into text adventure code, which is great. And um, the thing about this is that it allows you a lot more control over the state of your game via flowcharts. For example, it's got this thing called a skine, which is all of the actions that have ever been taken in your game. And I think there's even some code for having it do this automatically. But the idea here is you can see all of the possible states of your game and you can just run to any given place, see? Similarly, there's transcripts, which are just more detailed version of that. And then there's story, this is where you actually do your editing. Um, and you got your index with the various things in your game and what their current values are. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of stuff that's that's very, very easy to keep track of. You've got a wonderful flowchart happening here. The thing that you really need um, is flowcharts. Not every game needs flowcharts, but narrative games do. They're basically just flowcharts with faces. This has flowcharts, but neither Renpy nor the new visual novel maker do. That means they can take you to the starting line, but they can't take you to the finish line because as soon as your game gets even a little bit complex, you're going to lose track of what's going on. You need flowcharts. Now, obviously, you can just jot them down on paper, but that's not going to match what you code. You really need to have flowcharts that are generated by the code so that you know what's actually happening in the game. And those flowcharts need to be interactive so that you can just go to a given place. You don't, you don't want to have to try and work through the entire game to debug a scene that's four hours in, right? Sounds like a pain. If I click here, not only should this game have a flowchart of what scene goes to what scene, if I click here, it should automatically detect which variable is being loaded here. And it should say this variable is affected or queried in these other scenes. And here's the comment that you put in there. And here's the value, the thresholds that are being affected. Here's the range of possible values given how your game can be played to this point. Those really aren't hard to do. Those things can be processed because you know all of this code. This code is not like arbitrary code being executed, you know, typed in Python. These are code pellets that are created to be dragged and dropped. You can just have a variant that that quickly goes through all these things and uh, just quickly determines whether or not something is a loop, whether or not something is changing a value, whether or not something has a value referenced. These are not hard things to do. I've done them dozens of times. I don't know why nobody, nobody does them. It's so weird. I need to know what things are happening in the game in order to be able to make the game happen. There are some that do flowcharts. This is not something that never happens. For example, here's Fungus in Unity, and you can see it's got a lovely little flowchart down here. This is a scene flowchart. What I would like is three distinct flowcharts. Uh, the scene flowchart is definitely the best one for planning your game out. I would like a variable flowchart, which could just be the scene flowchart. But basically, if I click here on Courage Points, I want it to highlight everything that Courage Points affect or, or is affected by, and I want to see any thresholds that are required. So if I click here, I'd like to say, oh, well, Courage is in this scene and this scene and this scene and this scene, and it needs to be of a threshold of two in order to go over here, whatever the values are, right? That way I can tell whether or not they're possible. Uh, and the other flowchart is a skine. A skines are great, and you can automatically generate them. Um, they're not they're not automatically generated in Inform Seven, uh, at least not in the default. Just because uh, a text adventure is very very open ended, but these aren't. These are VNs. Uh, every choice you make is on a, on a menu. You can just go through and process them all. And sure, some of the results are going to be well. Yeah, anything could happen if you can just arbitrarily train. You know, chain you. Train your strength once per day, but you can loop any number of days. Well, then obviously your strength can be anything above zero. But that's a value that I would want, I would want to know. If the, if the strength can be increased before this event, then I'll see over there in the corner, strength, zero to infinity. Great. That lets me know the ranges that I'm working with. And I can have like a little note that says, oh yeah, and if it's less than 40, then this scene would fire and you know that sort of stuff. Great. 
lets me know what's going on. That will take me to the finish line rather than being stuck on the starting line. Fungus isn't perfect. It does the same kind of select from a drop-down list that we saw over in, uh, in Visual Novel Maker, but it doesn't have the pretty little icons um, and you can't play. I can't just go to this location by clicking on it. The, the game isn't actually advancing. But it is a great idea, isn't it? Imagine if here in Unity, I could just drag the character around. I could just right click on them and select say, and then it would pop up the menu and I, you know, the, the, the text box. And I could just type in that text box what they were saying and they would say it. And I could rewind it and fast forward it and see what was happening and move people around and change what's being said. That would not be hard. It would not be terribly hard. It would not be any harder than this. And here's the thing, it would generate this. It would automatically read this and generate it. And then you could just have something where when you click on it, it processes through all the historical ones and gets to wherever you are. That sort of thing is viable. I just think that nobody's really thought to do it yet. The next big visual novel maker will have a visual editor, a real-time visual editor, where you can just edit it and you can just right-click on a character and tell it to fade away or tell them to walk across the screen and they'll do it. You don't have to select from a big list. You don't have to try and remember a keyword. And to have flowcharts to help you get your game to a state where it's actually done rather than a state where you get hopelessly lost. Anyway, that's what I think about visual novel creation. Let me know what your opinion is. By the way, of these three, Visual Novel Maker is definitely the easiest to use, um, but it costs money. So there you go.